Hey, what's going on everybody? How's it going? Hope you're all are fishing. Uh, I am. We are today getting out on the water. I got a special guest. Um, I'm with Drew uh, Bone, so um, local in New Mexico. I gotta say he's got a pretty impressive um, resume already as far as fly fishing and hopefully you know what he will be as a fly fisher. So today we're out, um, you know, just gonna fish with this, this guy and uh, look at his approach, ask him some questions. But um, for right now, let's just uh, introduce you to him. My name is Drew Bone. I'm from Bernalillo, New Mexico. I'm 17 years old and I'm currently homeschooled. I was introduced to fly fishing through my parents at two years old because it was something that they did. I first became interested in competitions because I found out about the U.S. youth team through social media and I've been interested ever since. My first comp was in North Carolina. I placed seventh in my first comp. As a competitor, I've progressed to make the U.S. youth team earlier this summer and then just a few weeks ago at the U.S. Youth Nationals, I was added to the world's team to go compete in the world championship held in Italy next year. Yep, for sure. <laughs> All right, man. I'm gonna redo that one, or was that one good? Drew, well, congrats on making it onto the team, and uh, <clears throat> we definitely wish you all the best of luck in the upcoming World Championship next year. Uh, looking forward to following you on that, and um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll include uh, if, uh, Drew's social media stuff if he's willing to share that with you all that way you can follow along he's usually pretty good about posting results and stuff so uh, that'll be pretty awesome as well as the US youth fly fishing team uh, which I'm pretty sure you can find on Facebook uh, do they have an Instagram page yeah, I or think account it's the US youth fly fishing team okay cool yeah so uh, I'll probably drop that in the description below um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah excited to hear more about that and uh, see what, see how you guys do um, and in particular, see how Drew does. So now that we're done with that, done with the formalities, done with the interview, let's uh, get into fishing here. So we're on a pretty sweet section of river. Uh, the water conditions look excellent. And um, we got people eyeballing us up the river here, trying to um, see what we're doing. <laughs> I know it looks weird with people with a camera on the water. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, let's get to it. So. Um, yeah, got a nice little riffle going on right here. We'll see how long this goes. Just wanted to get in some sunlight. It's cold this morning, so I, I kind of imagine the fishing will be a little bit slow. And you may notice uh, a bit of a loss in audio quality because I have been reduced down to one transmitter. And um, so we're sharing a mic right now for the interview. And I will put on the dead cat and we'll just have the uh, the directional mic on top of the camera to pretty much carry or pick up most of the conversation. So, um, <clears throat> all right, well, let's get to it and put the other mic on and uh, we'll get fishing here. All right, Drew, talk about your gear, your setup, and uh, yeah, let us know what you got going on. So today I'm fishing a Hardy Ultralight, a 10 foot, two inch, two weight, paired with the Ultra Disc from Hardy and I'm fishing a Euronymphian fly line and my leader has a six pound butt section with a 4x cider and 6x tippet to a little waltz worm. Oh, running single? Yep, I'm gonna start out with a single nymph. Yep, so I'm gonna start out fishing this with a single nymph and I'm gonna just work my way out and just cut across and then I'll go back up and then cut back out across. I might switch to a heavier fly when I get out into the heavier, deeper water a little bit. Okay. But, yeah, so we got a riffle coming in from this side channel right here. It looks like it's maybe two and a half feet deep. And then there's a little seam in the middle where the channels come together. It looks like it's a little bit deeper. It looks like some good water. Wow. Oh. There you are. <laughs> that didn't take long, man. Nice. Yep. Nice. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well. Yep. Sweet. First cast. Yep. First cast. <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty tight in and working close in towards us, working mm -hmm. our bank side and then uh, obviously progressing and just gritting up the water, working towards the opposite opposite side. So 
Nice. Good For job. sure. Thank right. you. Let's do it again. Yep. <clears throat> Fishing a two weight. Two weight? Yep. Yes. Okay. So, what's your reasoning for running one fly today, or right now, anyway? Um, that's just how I rigged up in the parking lot and kind of rolled with it. And I, uh, it was shallower and shallower water like this. I like the, I'm a big fan of fishing a single fly. Move into some deeper water, maybe at the top, I might switch to a double fly and add a drop run. Stick with this for a second. All right, I'm gonna hop in, running my 10 and a half foot uh, Euro rod, uh, my Echo Shadow X, running a double Euro rig, uh, pink tag up top, size 16, 2.8 mil bead, and then on my point I got HDA Fe variant uh, 14, so that's got a 3.3, three, three and a half mil bead. So um, yeah, just fish through below Drew there. See, uh, see if I can't pick anything up down here. All right, let's do it. So it looks like Drew's running a dry dropper rig now. Was that last fish off your on that dry dropper setup? Yeah. And still on the waltz. You gave me one. I'm gonna hold off using it just for right now. I kinda wanna play around with some different patterns. Uh, he's running his patterns and I'll run some of mine, just give some variety. Uh, so it's one thing when you're fishing with other people or another person is maybe not not right away fish the same exact flies immediately. Um, divide it up, uh, maybe different techniques or different patterns and that way you can kind of spread and uh, work through water and work through patterns and find something that's a little more consistent, something the fish are really keen in on and then dial it in as you progress through the day. So a little tip, pro tip for uh, you know if you're fishing with somebody else, spread out that work. <laughs> there he goes, again on the waltz. Nice. Nice. That's how you do it, folks. We moved up to another spot. Uh, Drew worked that other pool, that little run down below pretty hard, so moved up and uh, still running the dry dropper. Same rig with the waltz worm below. Yeah, so dry dropper with the waltz worm below. Got this nice flat <coughs> uh, going on up into a riffle up above, so we'll just kind of spend time working here. And if there's gonna be any hatch activities, this has always been a good one for 
what I've seen in the past. If any betas uh, start popping, uh, definitely midges out on the water. But um, yeah, we'll see if anything else happens. So uh, we'll get to it. Um, I gotta redeem myself and get my ass kicked. <laughs> it's all good. USU team right there in New Mexico. U team, 98, 90, 97, 98. U team, 2022. Dude can fish. All right, let's get after it. That's a nice one. Rainbow? Yeah. yeah. Rainbow. Cool. All right, so slower, shallower, downsize, double 16s, red butt up on my dropper, pink tag on my point, two eight mil beads on both. Working in tight to begin with. There's shallow out right here for about another 10 feet. And then it, it there's like a little bit of a shelf that drops down. Kind of assuming they're going to be more on that shelf, but you know, they could be pretty well dispersed through even some of this shallow water, like right there. Always working tight. Got him. Nice bow. Pink tag. Yeah. Take your time on him. Okay, hook is out. Gotcha. So the pink tag is on the point. Yeah, not, ooh, there's a rise right there. That fish was sitting right here in front of me. There's a little depression. I can see it in the in the bottom here and again rather than trying to get out in the good looking water right away work your way out towards it pick apart this if you can see the bottom work that feature work those little depressions those under those depressions you see in the bottom there i would uh just basically work those like i would pocket water um just isolate the, the specific little depression cast your fly right to the top and let your fly work through into that depression and to the back end and then just pick up and cast again just if you try to let it drift too much longer than that you will probably hang up on the bottom there you go that one was on the red butt Pretty subtle hit. Okay, worked itself off there. Sweet. There we are. A little more feisty. I think a little more heat to it yes sir nice brown sweet being thorough this colder water want to give these fish opportunity they're not real aggressive they're not moving very far to get it you got to hit them in the face so. but they're feeding they are active they're just hunker down basically so if I can cover that water a little more thoroughly spend a little more time working a pocket working a depression working an area it may produce a few more fish out of that spot than running through it low at a faster speed or, or uh, tempo. Slow it down. Oh, 
That was, they're eating light. So that one ate on the point. He was holding down tight to the bottom. Sweet. There we are. Nice brown. Oh. <laughs> All right, so that's two in the red butt, which is on the point. Remember, I dropped, I moved it down from the dropper. On the drop. That's a good brown. All right, see so if we can turn this guy. Rod low, upstream, face him up, hopefully he's hooked well. I'm just gonna get him working up here, use the hydraulic to help propel him up. Yep, he didn't like that. Keep him coming up, yeah, and then up. Oh, rainbow actually. Good holdover rainbow. That's why he had some fight. Been in here a minute. Not a wild fish, stock fish. <laughs> so in the realm of Pertigones, let's try something with a silver bee. I'm gonna go with a blue and silver. So again, still just working with the theory that not necessarily specific fly but could be water column although they are hitting that red butt pretty consistently but could it be the silver bead that's drawing their attention so you have two flies silver beads about the same size same size one's got a blue body and the other one's got peacock black body Go. Red butt sit on the bottom. Chunky bow. Okay, let's further test that theory again moving the red butt back up to the dropper. Production going on the point. So, <clears throat> Point fly is definitely making more moves than the driver, but again, this is just the first one on this pattern on the point. Keep working it. I don't need the red butt. Thanks, buddy. All right, so ran through this nice little slow flat section right in here, even working in pretty pretty close. There's little depressions and buckets and stuff, and did an experiment, played around with um, uh, basically feeding area versus fly selection, if I'll put it that way. Uh, what that means is 
um, placing a specific fly so early on when we got in here the red button nymph picked up majority of my fish and it was on the dropper <clears throat> so thinking fish were holding up high in the water column I, what I decided to do was see if if that is actually what's happening so I put the red butt on the point and picked up a number of fish on it again moving a different pattern on the dropper nothing ate the dropper I think I might have one hit uh, but everything else came on the on the point the red butt so sitting down low in the water <clears throat> so to retest that and move the red butt back up to the dropper and then put a silver bead same bead size bead color back down on the point and again testing to see if they're actually sitting on the bottom or keying in specifically on that pattern and ended up picking up a couple more fish on the point fly which was a silver beaded blue body pretty chingon so um, <clears throat> it's really a uh, position in water uh, I feel but the red butt or in truth that silver bead probably has a little bit more to do with uh, these fish keying in on and eating that fly. It's just highlighted a little bit more in the water um, You know that gaseous bubble scenario that you see on emerging insects. So um, But again, we'll test it further. I'm going to run a HD HDA fay variant on the point and move that that red or keep that red butt on the dropper and Again, just see if it's fly choice. Um, I'm catching fish. So doesn't matter what I cho change to, uh, always keeping that one pattern that has been productive and just again, always testing that theory and who knows, you know, that could change. So anyway, keeping the flies near the bottom or on the bottom, key right now, especially with this cold water. Oh, nice. That's a good hit. He's running a dry dropper rig still. Or switched back to it, he was double nymphs a little moment ago. Egg. Yeah. That's uh, perhaps proving the theory, not necessarily a specific fly pattern, but maintaining your flies on the bottom. <laughs> there he goes. Try it even tighter along the bank, straight upstream with you here. Tight, huh? Tight to the bank. Yeah. Shallow water. So one thing we were talking about is up here you have a shoulder closer in that, that's a little quieter, a little slower, so you can see the texture of water change. It's a little more rough, a little more faster current out to that side. And then when you come in left of that line, you'll see it glass out and then it just gets a little flatter, a little slower, a little calmer. And same when you look downstream, you have a transition. So where I started was about right in here, moving up. And Drew started a little lower, and from up here you can see it a little bit more, a little more texture, a little bit of a drop. And so it started to accelerate. Where he started, it was slowest down there, and he picked up some fish. And as he got up higher, I don't know, it didn't, he didn't really produce that much, huh? So it started to accelerate. So that started to change the current speed. So that is in my mind dictating where these fish are actively feeding and holding so <clears throat> finding that slightly slower moving water um, giving these fish better opportunity to hold and feed without expending a whole lot of energy especially being that it's colder now. All right Drew what do you got going on now? Uh, I'm switching to just a single egg. Single egg? No dry just the egg. How long between your cider and the egg? Uh, about two and a half feet. Okay.
<laughs> All right, well, I think that about wraps up our day. Get Drew in the sunlight there. Pretty solid day once we moved uh, after lunch. Um, <clears throat> trying to find some different water, work some different water. Uh, we couldn't really match what we were fishing this morning as far as uh, depth and current. So it was a little more um, kind of hit or miss. So we were, we were really trying to work water that normally would hold fish in warmer co uh, conditions. Uh, but what we needed was that uh, slower moving water. <clears throat> uh, you know, even a little bit slightly shallower type stuff. So Drew down in this area right here picked up a few. Uh, so it, that matched the criteria where these fish were really holding and feeding uh, consistently. So, but anyway, uh, Drew, thanks for yeah. coming along and fishing with me. I'm sure we'll get out some more again. But uh, tell them where you can find you on social media. Yeah, so my Instagram is Drew underscore bone underscore. See how he does on on the youth team and going into world championships um yeah hopefully you know we'll have two world champions yep. stemming out of new mexico okay. so both youth team all right that'd be awesome <laughs> all right you know where to find me facebook instagram youtube please like subscribe share these videos uh and mock time of fly fishing as well as patreon Again, getting that Patreon going again. Uh, every every Patreon member does get to see these videos a week ahead of everybody else, plus you know some other stuff uh, that goes along with your subscription. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you on the water next time, and I will have more hosts uh, coming along, <clears throat> guest hosts uh, on these videos. So look forward to that. All right, guys, take care. Peace. <laughs>